You were more than likely peer pressured into playing this game at every childhood sleepover. However, the original urban legend of Bloody Mary claims that if you chant her name three times in a mirror in a dark room, a ghostly apparition will appear to show you the face of who you'll eventually marry. Seeing a skull indicates that you will not marry at all. Other versions of the legend say that the ghostly apparition will appear and scratch your face off. Bloody Mary is also the name given to Queen Mary I of England, who got the name due to her persecution of Protestant heretics, whom she burned at the stake in the hundreds. The tale of La Llorona originated in Mexico and is also sometimes called the Weeping Woman. The story tells of a beautiful young woman who met a wealthy nobleman, fell in love with him, and eventually they married and had two twin boys. As years passed, her husband grew cold and distant, only showing affection to their children until eventually he left her and married another woman. Completely shocked and humiliated, she took her two boys down to the river and drowned them without a second thought. Once she realized what she had done, she drowned herself in the river as well in hopes that she would be reunited with her children in the afterlife. However, because she had done something so terrible, her spirit was forced to roam the earth, constantly searching for her children. People claim to see her by the river at night, crying and pleading for her children to come to her. It is said that if her spirit approaches a child, she will confuse them for her own and sink them into the river as well once she realizes they are not hers. Popular in Slavic folklore, Baba Yaga or Baba Yaga is often portrayed as a ferocious looking old woman that dwells in the forest. She's not like other witches, so instead of a broom, she chooses to get around using an iron pestle and mortar. She lives in a small hut that travels with her on its chicken legs, and honestly, I'm kind of jealous and would like to see if she's looking for a roommate. There are so many different stories told of Baba Yaga throughout the years. Sometimes she's a child-eating monster, and other times she's actually pretty helpful, and maybe she's just misunderstood. In 1600s New Hampshire, Goody Cole was accused of witchcraft three times and was the only one accused in her state's history. Her land was taken from her since people accused of witchcraft could not own land and she remained in jail for several years. Once released, she had to resort to begging for money and food and eventually passed away in a small hut where she resided. The residents who found her body dug a shallow grave nearby and drove a stake through her heart because they feared that the evil within her would return to haunt them. Over 300 years later, the citizens of her town petitioned to give her back her citizenship. Believed to be the ghost of Dorothy Piemont, the Grey Lady is said to reside in England's Dudley Castle. The castle is believed to have several spirits roaming its halls, and the Grey Lady is the most prominent of them all. Dorothy Piemont died shortly after giving birth to a stillborn daughter. On her deathbed, her last wish was to be buried next to her child and for her husband to be able to attend her funeral. Her wish was not granted, however, since the castle was taken under siege by parliamentarians. It is said that her ghost wanders the castle, searching for her husband and her baby. Dolly Madison, wife of President James Madison, is often credited with transforming Washington, D.C. She was most known for her spirit, vibrant parties, and reshaping the interior design of the White House. Since her death in 1849, people claimed that she was the most frequently seen ghost in the White House and that her presence was often accompanied by the smell of lilacs. Dolly planted the original rose garden at the White House. During Woodrow Wilson's presidency, his wife Edith requested that the rose garden be ripped up and Dolly's ghost was less than pleased. The gardeners claimed that she appeared before them and shooed them away. The rose garden was left alone and remains in place to this day. Moral of the story, don't mess with a girl and her flowers. If you like this story, be sure to follow me. I'll be doing a new one for every day for the rest of October. La Mala Ora is an urban legend that originated in Mexico. She is said to be a wicked spirit that wanders the roads at night and terrorizes people who are traveling alone. She often appears at a crossroads and can take on many forms. Some describe her as a black hooded trout with no distinct features, while others say she appears as a woman with unkempt hair hovering above the ground. Those unfortunate enough to come in contact with her are told to avoid her gaze for it will drive you insane. If you do see her in her human form, legend says that either you or someone you know will die. Appropriately nicknamed the Blood Countess, Elizabeth Bathory is one of the earliest serial killers in recorded history. She was born in 1560 in the Kingdom of Hungary, and she was born into one of the most prominent families in Central Europe. Her parents were actually first cousins, which historians believe may have contributed to the violent seizures she frequently had. One of the ways they treated seizures during these times was drinking the blood of a non-epileptic person, which is believed to have inspired her lust for torture and killing later on in life. She mostly focused her torture on young peasant girls since she felt they were disposable and easy to obtain. Her torches included chaining her victims by their wrists until their hands turned blue and blood, sticking needles underneath their fingernails, and even forcing them to cook and eat their own body parts. Elizabeth actually kept a record of her murders in one of her private journals and it is believed that she had taken more than 650 victims over the course of 20 years. She also believed that bathing in the blood of her victims would give her that youthful glow. She could
The myth of the lady in red is common throughout Northern Europe, Canada, and the US. She is described as a sex worker in life and always dressed in her favorite color, scarlet red. The stories vary on whether she was killed by a jealous lover or a lover's partner, and sometimes she is depicted holding a knife, indicating that she took her own life. The spirit of the lady in red wanders through hotel rooms, whispering in hotel guests' ears as they sleep, and reportedly leaves pearls on their nightstands from the necklace that broke when she was killed. Okay, I'm actually so excited to be posting this drawing because the movie Corpse Bride was literally the reason I started drawing in the first place. I know this isn't based off of any urban legend, but I just had to redraw Emily and it was honestly so nostalgic because after drawing her probably 500 times during my formative years, I still remember the little details. If you guys would like to see one of my original drawings of her from like 2006, let me know and I'll post that. Anyway, back to business, let's get to the urban legend of the Corpse Bride. There are two very well-known urban legends revolving around the theme of a corpse bride. The first one occurred in Mexico where a woman owns a bridal shop and there's a very, very lifelike mannequin in her window. Because the mannequin was so lifelike and wearing a wedding dress, rumors spread that it was actually the body of her daughter who had passed away on her wedding day. That story was proven to be untrue, however, a story that is true is the story of Carl Tanzler. His wife passed away in 1931 and he continuously injected her with formaldehyde in order to preserve her body and supposedly did some unspeakable acts with her corpse. Yikes. The legend of La Sayona originated in Venezuela and tells the tale of a vengeful spirit who appears to men who have affairs. One night, a man who was obsessed with her lied to her and told her that her husband was having an affair with her own mother. Blind with anger, she burned down the house with her husband and baby inside and ran to her mother's house immediately after. She attacked her and as her mother bled to death, she cursed her, telling her that she would now have to avenge women by killing their unfaithful husbands. The legend claims that when her spirit appears, she'll ask for a cigarette or for a ride home, and anyone who gives in to her temptation will suffer the consequences. Before I get into this one, I just want to give a quick trigger warning. Suicide will be discussed. Peg Entwistle was an actress who began her stage career in 1925. She started by performing in Broadway productions, and she appeared in one feature film named 13 Women. In September of 1932, she climbed to the top of the H in the Hollywood sign, which read Hollywood Land at the time, and jumped to her death. She was 24 years old. A woman who happened to be hiking in the area came across a shoe, purse, and jacket. She opened the purse to find Peg's suicide note and found her body moments later. People say that her ghost haunts the Hollywood sign to this day and that her presence is accompanied by the smell of gardenias, which was her signature perfume. I know some of these stories can be a bit tragic, so I just wanted to remind everybody to take care of yourselves, and I hope you all have an amazing rest of your day. Probably an arachnophobe's worst nightmare, the Jodogumo is a type of yokai in Japanese folklore. Please don't kill me on that pronunciation, I'm really trying. <laughs> The word yokai refers to any supernatural being in Japanese folklore. It's not always an evil spirit, it's usually just something that's otherworldly or can't be described, it's just not of the human world. This spider demon, however, shapeshifts into a beautiful young woman in order to attract its prey and bring them to a painful death. Its diet consists of young men, which it captures by luring them in and entangling them in its web. So yeah, next time you see that spider in your house, just rescue it, let it outside, and don't ask any questions. Moll Dyer lived in Maryland in the 17th century, and her story is said to have inspired the movie The Blair Witch Project. Her tale has mostly been passed down through word of mouth, being that there are supposedly no historic records of her existence, so there are a ton of different versions of this tale. The story goes that she was accused of witchcraft and chased out of her home. What else is new? And the townspeople suspected that Dyer cursed the town after an epidemic swept through the area, killing many locals. Ooh, if only they knew. I wonder who they would blame in 2020. They also blamed her for the horrible winter they were having. Supposedly, it was one of the harshest in a really long time. Townsfolk set fire to her cottage on an extremely cold winter night, and she fled to the woods nearby. The legend goes that she laid her hand on a rock and cursed the entire town. She was found several days later, frozen to death. Nine years before the Salem witch trials would begin, Mary Webster became known as Half-Hanged Mary after surviving a lynching. Many 
of her neighbors disliked her due to the fact that she apparently spoke rather harshly and had a bit of a temper. Eventually, they began calling her a witch, abusing her, and even claimed she had a witch's mark, which was just a scar from a pot of boiling water. She had been put on trial for witchcraft before and was found not guilty. However, as years passed, a prominent citizen in her town, Philip Smith, died an extremely painful death. Sure enough, the blame was put on Mary, and they dragged her out of her house, hung her until she was nearly dead, let her down, rolled her in the snow, and buried her in it. Somehow, Mary survived this and lived another 11 years after the incident. In 1995, Canadian novelist Margaret Atwood wrote a poem dedicated to her. She writes, Most will only have one death. I will have two. The jackalope is a mythical animal of North American folklore and is sometimes referred to as the Frankenstein rabbit. This is due to the amount of taxidermies created to resemble the appearance of a real jackalope. It's described as a jackrabbit with antelope horns protruding from its head, and some people speculate that the real sightings of these creatures were actually just normal rabbits that had a virus that creates tumors on the body that resemble horns. Tales of the jackalope say that they are extremely dangerous, and one of the ways to entice them is with a glass of whiskey, <laughs> its beverage of choice. Such a classy bunny. The banshee is a female spirit in Irish folklore whose bone-chilling scream is said to be an omen of death. If you hear her shrieks, it is said that a member of your family will pass away soon. Some people believe that each family actually has a banshee of their own that watches over them. Some stories say that instead of appearing as an omen of death, they appear to celebrate someone's death. They often appear as a woman dressed in a gray or white cloak with reddened eyes from constantly weeping. Can relate. The banshee is a tale I'm quite familiar with and I always imagine them to be more of a nervous creature rather than a vicious one. Their job is basically to let people know that their time is up, so I always imagine them not being too fond of the fact that they're constantly warning people that someone they love is going to die soon, so that's why I depicted the banshee the way that I did. Once again, please be kind with my pronunciation of this, but Kuchisake Ona is a legend that originated in Japan and translates to the slit-mouthed woman. The legend goes that she was married to a samurai and he accused her of having an affair. In an act of rage, he took it upon himself to slit her mouth from ear to ear. When he finished, he asked, who will think you're pretty now? Soon after she died, she became a vengeful spirit, harming anyone who crossed her path. She appears to people who are alone at night, especially children, and she is always wearing a surgical mask, which is so common today, no one would even think twice if she approached you, which is scary. If she approaches you, she'll ask, do you think I'm pretty? If you say no, she will kill you right then and there. If you say yes, she will remove her mask, revealing her true form underneath, and ask, and now? If you say yes, she will carve the same smile onto your face, and if you say no, she will just kill you. So, there's really no right answer here. As someone who went to Catholic school their entire life, drawing this one definitely gave me some war flashbacks. But I love me some religious themes, so let's go. The Headless Nun is a tale that dates back to the mid-1700s and tells the story of a noble nun by the name of Sister Mary. During the 18th century, noble French women were sent to Canada to join convents, and Sister Mary was said to want the best for her community. Unfortunately, she met a tragic end. Stories differ on how exactly she was killed. Some say she was beheaded by a madman who went on a killing rampage, killing Sister Mary and hiding her head in the woods. Others say her head was cut off by two sailors who were looking for treasure that had been hidden somewhere nearby the town. During this time period, many killers used decapitation as a way to hide the identity of their victims since DNA evidence and dental records weren't really available. Her ghost is said to roam about in Canada's French Fort Cove searching for her lost head. It's said if she ever does find it, she will finally find peace and disappear. Many urban legends and ghost stories throughout the years show ghosts appearing in white garments. However, sometimes the color of the dress is symbolic of either how that person died or who they were during their life. There are hundreds and hundreds of tales revolving around the theme of a lady in white, and generally their tales relate to either being married or almost married. One of the more popular stories, and the one I chose to go with for this drawing, tells the story of the daughter of a lord during the 17th century in the Netherlands. She was killed in a barn fire on the day of her wedding by a jealous nobleman, and it is said that her ghost continues to haunt the area, seeking vengeance on the nobleman responsible for her death.
wanna be the one the Bell Witch is a legend from the southern United States which focuses on the story of the Bell family. They resided in Tennessee near the town of Adams in the 19th century and from 1817 to 1821 they came under attack by this mostly invisible entity. The family reported sightings of strange animals, one being a dog with the head of a rabbit and they heard strange sounds throughout the night. They reported hearing rats gnawing at their bedposts, scratching outside their windows, and rocks being thrown at the house. However, every time they went outside to see what was causing the noise, nothing was there. John and his daughter Betsy were said to have endured most of the abuse, which included being pinched, having their hair pulled, getting stuck with pins, and even being beaten. Whenever they asked who this entity was, it gave different names, one of them being Kate, which was actually the name of their neighbor. In 1820, John Bell passed away, and many people believed it was Kate who had poisoned him. Bell Witch is a huge part of Tennessee history and is still taught in schools today. Okay, I'm not gonna lie, I could not believe I was crossing out on the last row of the Inktober list. I feel like that happened so fast. Also, just wanted to include in this video that these are the inks I use. They're Dr. P.H. Martins. I saw a lot of people asking, so those are them. You can get them at Michael's or on Amazon. There are various versions of this story, but one version says that the blue lady is believed to be the ghost of Caroline Fripp. She and her father, Adam Fripp, tended to a lighthouse in South Carolina in the late 1890s. One night, one of the deadliest hurricanes hit North America, and Adam stayed in the lighthouse throughout the storm, determined to keep the light bright for the ships dangerously close to the shore. He suffered a heart attack, and Caroline took her father to a nearby house, where his final wish was for her to keep the light burning throughout the storm. Tales tell of Caroline pacing back and forth between the lighthouse and where her father lay for several days, wearing the same blue dress she had on during the storm. Some sources have said that Caroline died of shock a few days after her father's death, but others say she lived a long life carrying out her father's last wishes, keeping the lighthouse lamp lit to warn others of high tides and storms. Many have reported seeing the blue lady or feeling her presence on these stormy nights. Alright, I know a lot of people are excited for this one, so here we go with today's prompt, Anne Boleyn. The second wife of Henry VIII, Anne served as Queen of England from 1533 to 1536. It was considered a scandalous marriage due to the fact that the Roman Catholic Church denied Mr. Henry over here an annulment from his first wife, Catherine of Aragon. They got married without the Pope's blessing, and in 1533, Anne gave birth to a daughter, Elizabeth I. Eventually, Henry engaged in affairs with other women, which upset Anne, and he blamed it on his mission to have a son, since Anne could not do that. What a jerk. In 1536, Anne Boleyn gave birth to a stillborn male child, and Henry VIII was like, alright, on to the next one, and sought an annulment of his marriage and took Jane Seymour as his future wife. Q6 the musical comments. On May 19, 1536, Anne was executed on false charges of incest, witchcraft, adultery, and conspiracy against the king. There's so much more to this story, but I only have a minute to talk, so of course, feel free to leave your extra facts in the comments below. Today's prompt is the succubus, which can be traced back to medieval folklore. The succubus is known as a demon who takes on the form of a beautiful woman that appears in dreams to seduce men. They're often portrayed as a seductress or enchantress. Religious traditions claim that repeated sexual activity with a succubus can cause poor physical or mental health and even death. There is some belief that stories relating to encounters with succubi bear resemblance to the reports of alien abductions. It's suggested that these historical accounts may have just been symptoms of sleep paralysis. La Planchada is a Mexican ghost story of a nurse who is often seen in hospitals. The story takes place in the 1930s and tells the tale of a nurse who took great pride in her job and always made sure her uniform was clean, crisp, and perfectly ironed. She ended up falling in love with one of the doctors at the hospital and they were shortly engaged. The doctor left town to attend a medical seminar and weeks went by where she did not hear from him. Beside herself with worry, she found out that the doctor met another woman while he was away and the two had wed. She was extremely heartbroken and fell into such a deep depression that she started to neglect her own patients. One of her patients ended up passing away as a direct result of her neglect and she became ill herself. She ended up passing away in the hospital where she worked and it is reported that when the hospital staff are neglecting their patients, this ghostly nurse cares for them instead. When patients are asked how they seem to miraculously recover, they are reported saying, a nurse came in and healed me. So let's get on to the legend of the black-eyed children. This one's really popular. You've probably heard it before. They're said to be paranormal creatures that resemble children between the ages of 6 to 16. Their most distinct feature always being their pitch black eyes. They're often seen hitchhiking or on the doorsteps of residential homes. And legend has it that if they do appear on your doorstep, they'll be very persistent on entering your home. It is extremely important that you do not let them in because it's said if you do, horrible things will happen to you.
La Segua is a supernatural creature from Central American folklore. It's a shapeshifter that typically takes the form of an attractive, long-haired woman who seduces drunken and unfaithful men. She either appears to men fully naked or dressed in little clothing, or she even sometimes appears bathing in a river. She lures these men into dangerous situations, usually on moonless nights, so that she can hide her true form. At the last moment, she reveals her true face, which is that of a horse head or horse skull. Think horse girl, but make it vengeful. If her victim does not die of fear, he is usually driven mad by the sight of her. Moral of the story, as it is with most of these, it takes much less effort to just be faithful. <laughs> If you guys like this one, I just wanted to include in this video that all of the Inktober originals and prints will be added to my next shop update, so the reason why you don't see them in my shop right now is because I haven't edited them yet. And for those who are asking about a book, I'll be opening pre-orders for a zine in the shop update as well, which is happening November 1st at 7pm EST. Also, apologies in advance for not having any eyelashes in this one. The Brown Lady of Raynham Hall is thought to be the ghost of Lady Dorothy Walpole and gets her name from the brown brocade dress she had been seen wearing several times. She was the wife of a statesman and their marriage was extremely unhappy. Her husband was notorious for his bad temper and upon discovering that his wife had been unfaithful, he imprisoned her in the house they shared in Norfolk, England. He locked her away in her room, not even letting her out to see her own children and left her there to die. She ended up dying of smallpox in 1726 and it is said that her spirit remains in that room to this day. The first recorded sighting of her ghost was at a gathering on Christmas in 1835 where a guest noted the dated dress the ghost had been wearing and her empty eye sockets. following year, a guest was even frightened so badly by her presence that he fired a gunshot into her ghostly face, causing her to vanish. A photographer actually claims he caught a photo of her walking down the staircase in 1936, which I'll be showing at the end of this video for those who want to see it. Okay, if you know me in real life, you know that some of my favorite paintings ever are Renaissance paintings. I can't explain why, I just love that era. So when I was coming up with ideas for the Headless Horseman, I didn't want to do the quintessential riding in on a horse because that's just not my style. But I knew I had to include the horse because horse, man, yeah, you get it. So immediately this painting popped into my head called Young Woman with Unicorn by Raphael and I knew I had to take inspiration from it because it was honestly just kind of funny to me and I love art history so if you have no idea what I'm talking about I'll include the painting at the end of this video, let's get into the folklore. The Headless Horseman is a mythical figure that has appeared in folklore around the world since the Middle Ages. You might know him mostly from the classic short story The Legend of Sleepy Hollow by Washington Irving. The story goes that he was a soldier killed in battle by a cannonball, ow, and he came back as a malevolent ghost fiercely seeking his lost head. Oftentimes he's seen sporting a nice jack-o'-lantern as a replacement because he's just so spoopy. Again, I'm going to include the painting I took inspiration from at the end. I hope you can see where I was going with this. Marie Laveau was born in New Orleans, Louisiana, or NOLA, if you will, in 1801, and throughout her life she became known as the Voodoo Queen. She already had a background in African spirituality, and after the death of her mother, she was drawn to religion and underwent the instruction of a well-known root worker. It didn't take long for her to dominate the culture and society of voodoo in New Orleans. Many people confided in her for advice or protective spiritual objects such as candles, powder, and an assortment of other items. Many of her wealthy and politically affluent clients paid Laveau for personal advice and protection against any evil energy that might have been placed upon them. After her death in 1881, Voodoo in New Orleans lost a great deal of its supporters and began to take on new forms, becoming incorporated into other religions. She is buried in St. Louis Cemetery, and each year, thousands of visitors flock to her tomb. They adorn her plot with spiritual regalia, candles, money, flowers, and an assortment of personal items. The Three Witches of Auckland are the ghosts of witches who were hanged in the 1800s in Auckland, New Zealand. They haunt the area of Auckland Domain and they seem to take a particular liking to the area where a statue of the Three Muses is. Park goers report being ambushed by a cackling hag, me, while others have heard of tall, thin figures roaming among the trees. Most of these howls and screams are reported at night and it's said that if one drives down the lane where they were hanged, stop and turn off your lights, you'll be able to spot the witches moving through the trees. Thank you guys so much for watching my 2020 Inktober compilation. I hope you enjoyed it. As always, at the end of each Inktober series, I made a zine of each illustration and story that goes along with it. So if you would like to grab one, I'll leave the link to my Etsy shop in the description.